So today I'll be doing a quick unboxing of the Gigabyte 890FXA UD5. And the reason I'm actually unboxing this is I unboxed the 890FXA UD7 very recently and I was going to use it on my test bench, but I didn't realize, even at the time I was unboxing it, that it's actually one of those boards that's like one slot longer than a normal ATX motherboard, so it didn't even fit on my test bench. So now I need a different motherboard that supports USB 2, USB 3, eSATA, and FireWire. So yeah, there, there, there's one thing about this motherboard, it has support for seemingly every conceivable external drive interface possible. So let's go over some quick features here. First of all, it has their 333 onboard acceleration. That means you got USB 3, USB Power 3X, and so uh, USB Power 3X is a way to deliver three times the power through the USB 2 as well as the USB 3 ports. So it means you can power more devices off one port. Very cool. Thank you, Gigabyte. We've also got SATA 3, which is four times the speed via RAID 0. Oh, okay, that's an interesting way to uh, measure that, because it's actually two times the speed of SATA 2, but I guess if you RAID 0 it, it would be four times the speed, okay? And then we have a three-year warranty in the US and Canada, as well as their new on-off charge. So you can see they've got like an iPhone plugged into a USB port. Their USB ports will actually charge certain devices even when the computer is powered off. Pretty sweet. We've also got support for Ultra Durable 3, which is a 2 ounce copper PCB, Japanese solid caps, all that good stuff. We have support for AMD's latest Phenom 2 X6 6 core processors, as well as support for auto unlocking. So if you plug in a dual core or a triple core, then you will be able to just automatically unlock the extra cores as long as they are stable. We have support for 3-way Crossfire X, as well as native support for SATA 3, 6 gigabit per second via the SB850. So that means that unlike the Intel boards out there, AMD's latest chipsets actually support SATA 3 natively. You don't have to plug in any additional uh, third-party chipsets to the motherboard. Okay, so let's have a look at the accessories that are included. First, we've got an I.O. shield. And the cameraman is apparently trying to move his wrist rest thing so that he can get closer and look at my IO shield. There we go. Then we have a user's manual, which has a driver DVD, or utility DVD rather. Download the latest off the Gigabyte website, don't bother with that. In here we've got, uh, this is all English and it covers BIOS settings, installing your drivers, a couple basic troubleshooting things. Uh, front panel headers, where to plug stuff into the motherboard. Then you've got like a physical installation guidebook, so how to install a CPU. Um, this is more like a quick start guide, and it's in a bunch of different languages, including, wow, what is this? Okay, leave a comment if you know what language this is. Are you not even focused? There you go. Wow, I, yeah, I've never heard of that. Okay, next we've got four SATA ports, or SATA ports, four SATA cables, and these are uh, two right angle and two straight cables, and then one IDE cable. And then a random piece of paper. It's doing something in there, that's for sure. Okay, here we go. This is at like a weird angle too. I haven't, I've never seen a motherboard box like this before. All right, oh, we've got a gigabyte powered sticker. So this is powered by gigabyte, or rather your computer will be when you put this motherboard in it. All right, let's get this board open here. Stop rambling. So this board so far actually looks an awful lot like the UD7 that I already had a look at. I, see, I, can, I can see right away that there are quite a few things in common. So let's start, at the, uh, let's start at the center of the board. We've got an AM3 socket with support for the latest Phantom 2s, uh, including X4s, X6, X3s, X2s, whatever it is you want to put in there. It will be supported as long as it is AM3. So that means that you do have support for dual channel DDR3 memory. Memory controllers in the CPU, so AM3 CPUs, DDR3 board, thumbs up, good stuff. Up at the top of the board, we've got our 8-pin CPU power connector right where it belongs, and that's uh, under sort of the, uh, the MOSFET cooling, which I guess we'll have a closer look at later. As I mentioned before, DDR3 dual channel, these are color coded, so you want to put your dual channel matching DIMMs in the same color slots. Then we have onboard power and reset. This is the perfect place for those, in my opinion, because I think having them down at the bottom of the board doesn't make any sense, because as soon as you load it up with expansion cards, you can't access anything down here anyway. This is great. You got your 24 pin power right where it belongs, as well as your floppy and IDE connectors. Next, you've got a clear CMOS button, and while this is 
isn't quite as good as at the back IO plate. It is way better, again, than having it down at the bottom of the board where you can hardly even access it when it's installed in a case. This is terrific. Okay, on the side we've got two SATA 2 ports. Those are running off a third-party chipset, which actually I, I can't tell who makes it because it's labeled Gigabyte SATA 2. Okay, and then we have six SATA 3 ports. So those are all running off of the ATI SB850 Southbridge. Then we've got uh, system fan. I don't know what these are. TSL1 and TSR1. I'm guessing this is left and right, but um, hmm, left and right of what? Impossible to say at this time. Okay, we've got another clear CMOS jumper here. That's kind of interesting. So you can clear the CMOS the old-fashioned way as well. And then we've also got our front panel headers, including three USB, one Firewire, and one COM. Then we have an LPT. Wow, really? That's a parallel port header. I haven't seen that on a board in a while. Okay, well, good, good on you, Gigabyte, for including that for the people who still need it. Okay, then we've got two PCIe 1X slots four physical PCIe 16X slots and one PCI slot. Now looking at the electrical connections in these slots, these two are going to be 16X, 16X if you're running SLI or cross, uh, rather SLI. If you're running Crossfire, this board does not support SLI, only three-way Crossfire. And then these two ports are going to run in 8X mode regardless of what you're doing. Actually, you know what? This one's 4X only. So if you're running two Crossfire cards, you're going to use this one and cover this slot. And then you're going to use this one and cover this slot for the maximum electrical connectivity speed. And then if you run three cards, you'd add another one here covering the PCI slot and it would run 16x, 16x, 8x. Now since 8x actually doesn't have an impact on performance with modern video cards, what I would probably do is I'd try and find the long crossfire bridge and I'd run it in this one and this one. That way you've got a nice big gap between your cards, you leave open uh, a 16x, maybe electrical 8x at that point, as well as a 4x slot and a 1x slot, and then you cover the ancient PCI slot. That's probably what I would do. So here we've got our cooling solution. So here's the little cooler on the uh, SB850 Southbridge. You can see that. It's not going to do a whole lot cooling-wise, but it looks cool, and uh, since it doesn't kick off a whole lot of heat anyway, it doesn't really matter. Gigabyte has their kind of uh, Aztec-inspired looking Northbridge cooler on here. I really like this. Once again, it doesn't have like very. It, has, it doesn't have a lot of fins on it. It's not going to do a whole lot of cooling, but it totally doesn't matter because the Northbridge again also doesn't kick off a lot of heat. Then we've got our MOSFET cooler. This one does actually do some cooling. It's cooling the eight plus two phase power design that is going to be delivering power to up to six cores worth of CPU processing power. And this board, unlike the UD7. It's actually a normal length. So the UD7 doesn't have a slot here. It skips this slot and then it has seven slots. So the board is actually a little bit longer. Go figure. Okay, then we're moving on to the back where we will find ports. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight USB 2.0 ports, one PS2 uh, keyboard mouse combo port. Then you've got digital audio out in both flavors, uh, optical as well as coaxial. Then you've got two firewire ports, and these two are, besides being USB 2.0 ports, they are also eSATA ports. So the USB 2.0 contacts are on the bottom, and the eSATA contacts are up here on the top. Very cool. Then we have USB 3.0, 2 gigabit Ethernet, as well as 7.1 audio out. Thank you for checking out my unboxing of the 890 FXA UD5.